All right, guys, welcome to ceramics. I'm gonna take the mask off, but when you're here, remember you have to wear it. But I'm gonna give you a little studio tour. Um, if you've ever been in my classroom before, you will notice it looks a lot different than it normally does because of social distancing protocol. So this semester we have little areas. Ignore the coffee cup and all the mess from um, my child and his cousins that come in in the afternoon to do schoolwork. So there's gonna be Legos. Those won't be here when you come to class, don't worry. This table is a table that is here right when you enter the classroom. Those are my kids, but that's an old, old picture, but they're pretty cute. But anyways, this little section is where you come in. There will probably be less toys and less junk on this table. Fingers crossed. Um, but if you're leaving the classroom at any time, you need to make sure that you sign out on this sheet to tell me where you go. And there is a hall pass that you need to take with you to go to the restroom. Also, this little caddy right here is where you will turn in your cell phone so we are not distracted by technology because I think everybody will be in agreement that we have had enough technology for ceramics to last us a lifetime. But, so we have little cubby kind of areas. So this will be enough room for one or two people depending on how big your class is. And then you'll have a storage thing and a wheel that is close by. So you're not going to be sharing as much materials. Um, you will have your own toolbox, you will have your own cleaning sponge, and you'll have your own clay. So we're not sharing the same materials. The only thing you have to share is like maybe two people might be sharing a table and there should be enough distance between. Um, and you have to share a wheel. And then we have more wheels than we need depending on which level we're in and how far we can go. So I'm gonna show you some more things, so bear with me. Right, so here's another little section. This table's bigger, so these are, the smaller tables will be like, if you have a really big class, if we have to do it. But you've got six shelves in one cart. That means the top two, right here, top two, would be for the two people that sit there during block A. The middle two would be the people that sit there during block B. And the bottom two would be the two people that sit there in block D. So that is how we're going to figure that out. But you can see that you should be able to get everything done in this little area. You will keep your pieces and your uh, here that you're working on in class. Um, when we are here full time and not on a hybrid schedule, you will keep your tools here, any pieces you're working on, but that way you will be able to do everything in your little section. So we have lots of those. Here's another section, some wheels and carts behind that. Um, also, our sinks are normally color-coded, but for the purpose of this semester, the procedures will be different because of social distancing. But like these two tables, will always use this sink. This table and this table will use this sink. This is a big table, and there's a chance that it'll look a little different when you come in. Um, we'll use those wheels and those four people will use that sink. But as you can tell, we'll come over here and look at some more stuff. This table, the wheels are behind them. This table goes there. Like I said, there's some messes in here that won't be in here when you come in. And this little table, there is a wheel over there. Um, this little area is my stuff that I'll be working on. And then our slab roller is right here and I will show you a little video of how to use the slab roller. So that was a little time lapse of how to use the slab roller and we'll go over more details of that later. The last little section of students will be this table of four and they'll use these carts and wheels. Um, so that's kind of the setup. So that's kind of the setup for where we're gonna sit and we're gonna do the wheel work and where we're gonna keep our stuff while we're in here. Now I'm going to show you some equipment that we use. We went, we'll go over next week our stages of clay, but 
When you use clay, you can always reuse it. And I take all your scraps and I run them through a machine. So this is the pug mill in use. The clay goes in here and it comes out here and I cut that off. And that is what I use for your bags of clay that you'll be using. So I'm gonna show you a time lapse of that real quick. So I hope you enjoyed that time lapse of the pug mill, but that is just a quick way that all the clay that's at different consistencies can go through this machine and end up being ready for you to use either on the wheel or doing your hand building projects. Um, when you're in class, we have more sinks for other tables that will go through those procedures as we are there. Um, our classroom is made up of one giant classroom and some smaller rooms. So this is the kiln room. Kiln room. Um, I don't really let students in here, but it's good to know what this is. So in this lovely room, we have some shelves, but these are your kilns. We are lucky enough to have three kilns. Hopefully all of them will be working at the same time this semester. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But all your stuff will get loaded in here and I'll put little kiln sitters in between and all the stuff gets piled up top. I might have an old time lapse that I can insert right here of me loading a kiln at home so you can kind of see how that looks. But this is what fires. This little control panel is what I can adjust to fire either at cone 06 for a low fire firing or cone 6 for our mid-range firing, which is our glaze firing that we will go over when we talk about stages of clay next week. All right, this room right here, it says storage, but it's really our glaze room. I've turned this storage room into a more feasible area. But in this room, all these buckets that you see in here have glaze in them. Glaze is something we'll talk about later in the semester, but if I open one up, it's kind of the water's floated to the top. But it's a mixture of powders and water. That is what gives your pieces a finished look that makes it look like glass on the top. So we have lots of choices of glazes. Um, if you choose to take advanced ceramics, you'll be actually making the glazes, and that's what a lot of this is. Hopefully before you get here, um, I'll have a chance to clean this up. If not, it'll happen eventually. But I was just gonna show you real quick. These are like our powder materials. When we learn about glazing later in the semester, I will go through this with more detail with you, but just know that lots of chemicals go into our glazes to make lots and lots of variety. So it's pretty cool, it's, it's basic chemistry. You could study a ton of stuff to figure it out, but we'll keep it basic for in here. Um, so this is the glaze room. All right, so this storage room, there's no reason for you to go in there, but we'll just show it to you anyways in case you're wondering what's in there, what's behind the door. So this is just where I keep other storage. Like I said, I turned that one storage room for you all. And so this is just more glazed materials, more tools, just stuff we might need throughout the semester. Toolboxes, just extra storage. So there's no need to come into this room. The last room that no one's really allowed in but me, but you know, sometimes when you don't know what's there, you just wanna know. So this is my office. When we've had our Google Meets, you might recognize that door because that's where I sit. And it is just a delightful little mess that I like to pretend that is organized. But as you can see, I'm a total mess but that's all right. That's the classroom. I hope you've enjoyed our little sneak peek of our tour and um, look forward to you actually being in here with me. Can't wait.